Well, welcome back. We're so glad that you could join us again for another installment of Words with Friends. We're going to uh, look at the words from the Shema that we started last week. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. And today we're talking about love, although we talked about love a few weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks ago. Uh, do you know, Luke, why you should never date a tennis player? Because uh, it's... <laughs> It has to do with love. Buddy. Because love means nothing to them. Uh, gotcha. All right. I yeah. thought tonight... Don't... That's a good one. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I, I thought tonight we'd start by playing a little word game since we're doing words with friends. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you've got to read the blue side. Okay? Okay. And we're going to give you 60 seconds. We need we need 60 seconds on the clock. All right. I don't know how we're going to decide. It, I'll put it right in the middle. Okay. Of Are you ready? Yeah. 60 seconds on the clock. However many... I get you have to try to get me to say the right thing. I have to try to get you. To I, say I'm gonna just just start reading. We'll see how it goes. Okay. By kraut. By kraut. By kraut. By kraut. By kraut. By kraut. Yes. Um. Rot into thick ore. Rot into thick ore. Rotten to the core. Rotten to the core. Indeed, haul cows. 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 In the haul cows. In the hog. In the hog house. No. In 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 the. Yeah. In the hog house. In the hog house. No. In the hog. When you're in trouble, where are you? In the dog house. In the dog house. Uh, annul him a soul who's shun. What? And <laughs> hold on. Annul? Oh. Annul him a soul who shun. Something annul, solution. Yeah. Annul, 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 him, annul him a soul who shun. You have to read English <laughs> for this to work. <laughs> I think what, my time's up. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. I got three or four? Yeah, I got three. Okay, here we go. Okay. Ready? Bed chirp autumn dollar. Bed chirp autumn dollar. Oh, that was easy. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers. Pitchers. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers heat bell town. Pitchers heat. Put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. Jog clay dice cream. Jog. Jog, Jog clay ice cream. Jog clay ice. Chocolate ice cream. Jog clay ice cream. An emergency. An emergency. Oh, that was too easy. Lilac aid hog. Lilac aid hog. Lilac aid dog. Lilac aid dog. Lilac aid dog. Lilac a dog. Lilac a dog. Ask Lear essay bail. Ask Lear. Ask. Asking. Ask Lear essay bail. Ask Lear essay bail. Lilac Ask Lear essay bail. That's clear as well. That's clear as well. Then we're gonna do one more. Water wheeze post toot who? What? Water wheeze post toot who? Water. Water wheeze post toot who? Water wheeze post toot. Who? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? All right. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed playing along at home. If you would like, you have to email or text or uh, send a, a passenger pigeon to one of us, and we will send you a. Bible version of this mm. with 10, 10 mad gabs to play that are all Bible related. But right now, let's watch our Bible Project video about love. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the third key word in this prayer, how Israel is called to love their God. But what does that mean? Love is a very common word in most languages, as it is in ancient Hebrew. It's pronounced ahava. It most basically refers to the kind of affection or care that one person shows another. It sometimes describes physical affection, like the king of Persia's love for Queen Esther. But there are other Hebrew words that more specifically refer to physical desire or sex. Ahava is more broad. 
So uh, Abraham had Ahava for his son Isaac, that's parental love. Jonathan showed Ahava for his friend David, that would be brotherly love. In fact, a whole group of people can have Ahava for their leader, like when the Israelites showed love for their King David. Ahava can even describe loyalty between political allies, like Hiram, the king of Tyre, loved David. They had good relations, and so Hiram wanted to help David's son Solomon build the temple. These are all different kinds of affection described with the one word, Ahava. Now, all of this is helpful for understanding God's Ahava in the Old Testament. So in Deuteronomy, Moses told the Israelites, God showed affection for you. He chose you because of his Ahava for you. So God doesn't love because the Israelites earned it or deserve it. It simply originates from God's own character. He loves because he loves. This is why Jeremiah can say that God's love is everlasting. It has no end because it has no beginning. God's love just is an eternal fact of the universe. And God's love is not a duty, it's a genuine feeling, an affection that God experiences. This is why the prophet Hosea compares God's love for his people to a husband's ahava for his wife, or to a parent showing ahava for their child. It's one of the strongest things that God feels. But that doesn't mean that God's love is just a feeling. God's love is also in action. It's something God chooses to do. Like when Moses says, because of God's ahava for your ancestors, he brought you out of Egypt with great power. God's love isn't just a sentiment, it is something God does. And so, in the Shema, Israel is called to respond to God's ahava by showing ahava in return. And just like God's love, human love is to show itself through actions. Like in Deuteronomy 10, what does the Lord your God ask of you except to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him and serve him and to keep his commands? All of these actions are centered around love. If I'm not doing them, I don't actually love God, I just say I do. Which leads to one last thing. In the Old Testament, I show my love for God by how I treat the people around me. In Deuteronomy, we read that God defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and he shows ahava for the immigrants among you, giving them food and clothing. And so you also show ahava for the immigrant. So the people are to imitate God's ahava by showing ahava for others. This is the idea underneath the famous line, you shall ahava your neighbor as yourself. And so at the end of the day, all of this is rooted in God's own eternal ahava. Like we read in the New Testament letter of 1 John, we love because God first loved us. And that's the Hebrew word ahava. All right, well, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I really like these videos. I always seem to learn something new every week. Uh, what was different, Luke? Because we just, it seems like we just talked about love not right. too long ago. What was different in this ahava against maybe agape yeah. love kind of different? Yeah, well, yeah, agape is that love of God, that love of Jesus that it's all encompassing. And this is saying the ahava is more of the action that we can go do because we can't obtain the agape, but we can obtain the ahava. We can be in motion, we can go be doing and loving. Yeah, I love that he talks about it as God is the source of it, that he, it never started, it just always was. It right. is as intrinsic to God's character. It is it is what God does, but it also is what God is. Yeah. And so it kind of, this ahava exists objectively outside of itself. Yeah. We can imitate it, we can emulate it, and I would say we're at our best selves when we're acting out of it or, or trying to live up to it. Right. Um, but let's talk about what are some of those qualities of God's love for us and then maybe how we measure up or don't measure up. I'm, I'm going to give you two or two or three uh, uns here. Unconditional. Uh, no matter what you've done in the past, God is going to love you. This is Romans 8. Uh, Luke, I'll let you read this. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, Paul asked that question, who shall separate us? 
maybe a better question is what shall separate us? Mm -hmm. What are the things that keep us from uh, really encountering or um, completely taking hold of that love that God has for us? Right. I would say guilt, shame, Mm -hmm. past actions, uh, bad role models. We've seen, especially when we talk about God as father or God as parent, if we didn't have parents that loved us unconditionally, mm. if it, you always felt like you never quite measured up, then it's hard to feel that unconditional love right. coming from God. What are some of the things that might separate us? I, I love I, I love the list that he gives there, yeah. and I love that he starts, who shall separate us? Nothing. Nothing right. can separate us. Yeah. I, I think when I read the height nor depth, I think of the valleys, like mm. the, the mountains and valleys of life. When we're on top and maybe we feel like it's, uh, and I, when I read that, I think when I'm on the mountaintop, I, it's almost like, well, I don't need God anymore. Sure. My pride takes sure. over. I'm on top of the world. And then when we hit that valley and it's, I need God here the most. You know? It's interesting that both can separate us. Yes. That both, uh, both can keep us from, from feeling like love. God. I, I think I've shared this with you before, but I, I love this is from a, 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 a young, I think a six year old. who said, dear God, I bet it's hard for you to love all of everybody in the whole wide world. There's only four people in our family and I can never do it. Man, it's it's difficult. It's difficult mm-hmm. to really love people yeah. uh, because of how they act to us, uh, towards us. And God says, no matter what. Um, so here's the deal. God's commanded us to love some people in our lives that aren't going to deserve it. Right. That no matter how much you love them, they are not going to love you back. Uh, they don't even care if you love, they're liable to throw it in your face. They're liable to make fun of you about it. Mm -hmm. And God says, love them anyways. There's probably someone in your mind that you think, well, I can't love. Well, if you can't love that person, remember, uh, that God loved you anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, This one's going to sound similar, but it's different. Unmerited. How is unmerited different than unconditional? Unconditional means there's nothing that I've done or can do that will keep me from it. But there's also nothing I've done or can do that will earn it. Earn it, yeah. yes. Right. That will bring me up to this level where it's like, oh, yeah. It's not performance-based. Yeah. It's not... Um, you don't keep your clip on, on green all week so you get love. You're not a little bit easier for God to love than me. Right. No matter what, yeah. like even if you're the best at something. Mm-hmm. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. He didn't say there was anything that we've got to work our way into. Right. This is not something that that we can uh that we can suddenly achieve a certain level and it's like, "Oh, you've unlocked God's love," right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um I I love this this is a quote from a guy named Rodney Pickett. He says, "Love is the identifying mark of Christianity." Now think about this. In a world of hate, envy, anger, Love sticks out like a healthy thumb. Mm. When someone walks away from an, an encounter with us, Christians, that person should remember our love, not our convictions. Right. Man, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I know for certain, like, like, I always think about people you see on the highway and their car is just like covered in bumper stickers. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, I got it. Right. I know what you pa- feel passionately about. Yeah. I don't know anything about you, yeah. but I probably don't want to have a conversation with right. you. You know, um, and I think I think we try to pass that off that they should remember our love, not our convictions. And I think that a word or a phrase that Christians like to use is, "Well, it's tough love." I'm telling them yeah. how they should be living because I love them so much, and, and it comes across this aggressive, and, and we try to cover it with, "Well, it's tough love." It's well, and, and tough love is saying. Once you get this right, right, then I'm gonna accept you. Right. But until you do that, I'm gonna withhold my love. Right. It's hard. Yeah. Here's here's a here's a funny one. Here's uh, dearest Jimmy, no words could ever express the great unhappiness I've felt since breaking our engagement. Please say you'll take me back. No one will ever take your place in my heart. So please forgive me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yours forever, Marie. P.S. And congratulations on winning the state lottery. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've got to quit making people earn our love. 
and say, like holding him off at arm's distance and saying, well, as soon as you do this, as right. soon as you're sorry enough, right. as soon as I can really see that you're trying to turn things around. Right. No. As long as, uh, until you say, you're right, I'm wrong. Yeah. 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 Uh, number three, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. So it's unconditional. It's unmerited. It's yeah. undeniable. First John 4, 7. Read that one, Luke. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son in the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I want to close with one last story. This is one of my favorite stories. I I've came upon this years ago and I kept it in my files and here it is. It's about a 50 year old social worker, a gal by the name of uh, Connie Going, and she helped Match, get this, more than 1,000 Tampa Bay area foster kids. Can you imagine? She was able to go to those those uh, those wonderful uh, courthouse meetings mm -hmm. where you say, it's, it's official, you have right. a family. She has a saying, or had a saying, every child is adoptable. There's a family for every kid. And uh, she said that's, that's her job, is to find out, just uncover who that family is, that there's a family out there from everyone. Uh, but, but then she met a kid, a kid named... Uh, Taylor. And Taylor had a tough time getting adopted. In fact, he spent 10 years in foster care along with his siblings. And, uh, and uh, Taylor even said, he said, it's, it, was, it was always somehow my fault. But I didn't realize that, that, you know, when I was growing up, it was, he, he, he always felt like it was his fault that he didn't get, get adopted. Uh, Taylor had that same problem that we talked about earlier. His parents weren't that great. They were drug addicted, they were they were having a, a really hard time. And so they gave up his, uh, him and his two brothers, or his two sisters, excuse me, and they entered the foster system together. Now they were actually adopted, and then get this, Taylor was taken back. Mm. He was given back into foster care while they kept the two sisters, uh, saying that Taylor had anger issues. And so you know the story, right? Taylor goes in and out of a dozen different foster houses, uh, and Taylor says, I was just so mad because I, I thought they, they weren't going to keep me. And so I kept trying to test them. And so uh, Taylor said, I know that love is only when you earn it. And so I'm going to make you see right. that, that I'm never going to earn it. And he says, when you feel you're not lovable, listen to this, and you're up against someone loving you, that's a pretty scary thing. And Connie says that. Uh, so through the whole process, Connie is like, I, I know that there's a family out there. She said, all I could think was how he was feeling and how he was blaming himself again. Again, it's my fault that nobody loves me. Right. I haven't earned it. I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And I think you might see where this story's going. Uh, Connie said she felt so bad for Taylor. She got an ache, a physical pain in her stomach. And, uh, with that pain also came this this epiphany, this idea. She realized right then and there that she couldn't be his caseworker anymore. And Taylor, I think, was probably faced with another rejection. Mm. Instead, the next day, she made arrangement to drop him as a client and to take him on as a son. Their adoption was uh, finalized. Uh, Connie has two kids of her own, uh, but but welcomed her first boy into the family with open arms. And uh, I love how it says, Taylor still has anger issues. The, man, the mirror in his bedroom didn't break itself, but most of the madness has stopped as a week of weeks ago. And Taylor told Connie, he, uh, after Taylor told Connie he was run, running away from home, he'd say, I'm leaving, I hate this. And I'd be like, I'm not sending you away, Taylor. And he would look over at me and take his backpack off and head back in. And finally, Taylor says, and I'm like, yeah, this is where I belong. She knows my worst side, and she still cares about me, and she still loves me. I don't know of a better example yeah. of that God Ahava, that steadfast, unmerited, mm. unconditional, and undeniable 
love. Hey, that's our lesson for tonight. I hope you're enjoying this weekly series. We will be back in person on December 2nd, Second. hopefully. But we're Luke and I are committed to continuing to bring these to you every Wednesday night. God bless.